In this video we've learned about adding and subtracting decimals already so we're going to go on and talk about multiplying decimals. And remember how earlier on I showed you two methods for multiplying whole numbers? Well, basically these methods that I'm going to show you are the same methods but um, with extensions on them for dealing with decimals more well, than just whole numbers so let's look at some examples here I'm going to do them by two different methods but these ones are special cases as you'll see so I've got 3.4 times 2.5 now for the first method what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the problem into 34 times 25 and remember how we work this out we'll change it to these two easier multiplications work these out that comes to be 100 this comes to be 750 then we'll add these up and you know how we do that, you get 850 so the answer to this here is 850 but this isn't the original problem so what we do now is we'll see that both of these have got one decimal place and we'll add up the number of decimal places in the first one and the second one and that tells you how many decimal places there will be in the result. So we've got one here and one here. So the answer is going to have two decimal places. So the first decimal place would go here. So that would just make it 85. And then I've got another one to move along. So that comes to 8.5. So the answer is 8.5. And... I want to show you now the grid method for doing the same example. Which is, if you remember, we draw a grid. Put the decimals straight in for this one. So that's what you do as in the first video, you multiply them, and then we'll add each diagonal, and get 7 there, that's a 0, 7, that's a 5, sorry that's a 5. This one's seven, I was looking at the wrong one there. So that's an eight. And then we'll join, go down this line for the first decimal. And then we'll follow this line along where the second decimal is. And then the, the diagonal at the meet at, we'll follow this diagonal down. And then we'll put in the decimal point there. So we'll get the same 8.50, which is the same as 8.5, because the 0 doesn't mean anything. So the answer to this first problem here is 8.5. Let me rub this out now. Next one for multiplying by 10. So what happens is when you multiply by 10, the decimal point here moves to the right every time we multiply by the 10. So what happens here is this decimal point will move along one space to the right and we'll get 64.2. And then if we multiply by 100 it moves two places. So it moves along one extra from this, so then we'll get 642. 
and then third one, 6,420. Now if we multiply by 10,000, we get 64,200. So however many zeros you've got here, that's how many places the decimal point moves along to the right. So those are some special cases. Last example I want to do is this one here. So we're going to do it by a first method and 2 times 9 is easy. You know from your times tables that that's 18. So and this one's got 2 decimal places. This one's got two decimal places, we'll add them up. So our answer's going to have four decimal places. So we're going to get note, point, note, note, one, eight. Now as you can see, that's the four decimal places, so that is going to be your answer. And we can do it by the other method, which is the grid. So let's do that. We'll see that they both come out with the same answer. This is a good and simple method, but the only problem is why some people don't like it is it takes time to actually draw the grid. You can see we get a lot of zeros when we do the arithmetic here. And got only left with an 18 in this box. This is the only box where you actually get a number. So then we'll continue here. We've got nothing to add up there. So I get a follow that down there. Follow this one along the way this one ends, then the meat, and we'll go down here. And that's where the decimal point is. And note point no, note note isn't necessary because note's just note. So we can write that the same as that note point note note one eight, which is the same as what we got before. If you get it with both methods, you can assume that it is the right answer. So, just want to um, mention quite clearly what we'll do here, I'll show you. Is we'll follow this decimal point down, we'll go down to where the other decimal point is. Follow this along, and we'll follow that one down where the two decimal points meet. So it's like just going along, going down, and that's where they meet, and then we'll follow the diagonal down, and then we'll put in my decimal point there. So that's your extension to the grid method for working with decimals.